get ready for a science lesson today. Now this, what we're going to talk about today is a little technical, but not that hard to understand. I'm going to give you some resources. Um, what I'd like you to do, my lovely members only community, is down below in the description box are two videos about a thing called the double slit experiment. And then there's a third video about a thing called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Okay? So watch those three videos in order, one, two, three, and then come back to this video, right? So in order for this video to make sense to you, you gotta go watch those three videos. Watch them a couple of times and just sit and think about what you watched, process it, and then come back to this video. So I'm gonna pause right here so you can go do that. Now, I hope you were able to at least kind of understand what you watched in those three videos below. If it was confusing to you, I've got some good news for you. It's confusing to scientists. <laughs> That's why I'm drawing your attention to these two phenomenon. So the double slit experiment is showing you a phenomenon called the collapse of the wave function where particles appear to be a wave. So, so wait a minute, is it a wave or is it a particle? It's both. And for the wave to, con to be converted into a particle requires the measurement of information. So when an observer is placed inside the double slit experiment, the wave collapses into a solid particle. So a particle is traveling as a wave without an observer. When you add the observer, the wave collapses into a solid object. Weird. And they don't have a great explanation for it, although they're kind of starting to. And you guys are going to think this is really interesting. Um, I'm going to link down below um, the information realism interview that I just witnessed with uh, Robert Lawrence Kuhn and Greg Shayton. And Greg is a uh, mathematician and he's not a physicist but he knows a lot about it and he's definitely qualified to talk about it information realism we've talked about this before in this members only series is kind of where science is going and Greg in the video so it's gonna be the next video down below in the description box you watched three right I had you watch three there's a fourth one you might have noticed you can watch that one too and Greg, he comes right out and says it. Yeah, the universe is mind. <laughs> and the, the, the narrator, the interviewer, Robert, he, he kind of presses him on a little bit, right? Like, okay, so if you're saying the fundamental basis of reality is information, what are you trying to say here? That's like saying what, dude? What are you saying? And, and it's like both guys in the conversation at that point, they know exactly what's being said. And so Greg, at that time, he comes right out and he says, yeah, it's mind. It's just straight out, right? Guys, this is what I've been trying to tell you. <laughs> They're not telling you this on television, where modern science is headed, okay? Modern science is proving out the ancient hermetic philosophies, which have been taught since before the, the time of ancient Egypt, right? Hermes Trismegistus, who by the way, was the mentor of none other than Abraham, at, like the Abraham, right? Science is proving these spiritual philosophies, which by the way, hermetic philosophy, philosophy can be found in all of the world's religions. It's as though somebody reached into a bag of seeds 
right? And the bag of seeds representing hermetic philosophy and flung it all over the world. And each one of those seeds ended up in all of the world's religions. Very interesting. And this is a very interesting thing to study. How other religions can intersect at some of these deeper teachings. But I don't want to get too deep into that. So, I'm just showing you that this is knowledge that's been known about long before modern science. And science is just catching up to that. And they're proving this stuff. They're proving that we live in a participatory universe. The universe is mind. It's mental. Okay? Now, if the universe is mind, if it's just energy, and you have a mind, what do you think can be done? Hmm. So 3D physical reality, this is what information realism is saying. The theory of information realism, which is now part of conventional science, guys. They're just not telling you that on TV. Okay? What they're still telling you on TV is the dead universe theory. Okay? The, the, we live in separation and the universe is just a big dead machine, right? And we should be able to make predictions. But where this is going in the conventional scientific community is that information itself is the substrate of 3D physical reality. A substrate is like the frame of an automobile, right? Or the foundation of a building, right? The substrate of 3D reality is mind. That's what science is saying. Conventional science. Guys, you can manipulate that with your mind. This is real. Now, I've done a little bit of setup. What about the title of this video? Right? Because this video is called Uncertainty is Reality. Right. Now, is it uncertain? Or is that just our perception. That's my point. So science is starting to describe ultimate reality, the substrate of physical reality, which is information. They're describing that as random. Okay? And scientists hate that. The traditional view, again, of the universe is the materialist view, which says that there has to be a calculation or a formula for everything. And we should be able to make predictions about everything in our universe. Like the universe is just a machine. It's the dead universe materialist notion of science. Like A plus B equals C. It's a calculation. You can make predictions. But that's getting challenged, okay, by these new sciences, which are saying, no, there's a randomness. And by the way, quantum physicists have been saying for decades that quantum physics is based on randomness. Astrophysicists, they can't stand that. And they argue back and forth all the time about if there's randomness or if there's organization. And what I'm telling you is they're figuring out that it's both. Now, if it's randomness, then it's uncertainty. That's why in the double slit experiment, you don't know which particle is going to land on the screen in the back when it is creating a wave and in what order it is going to do that. It seems random. But what's interesting is you end up with an organized wave pattern at a higher level. Right. So, is there organization or is there a randomness? There does appear to be predictability. We know there's going to be a wave, but how you get to the wave out of trillions of individual particles is random. Or is it? Or the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. We can know one piece of information, but we can't know both. It's unpredictable. Uncertainty is reality. That's what these new sciences are saying. Okay? But here's what I'm trying to tell you as a spiritual teacher. That's just science's interpretation of information realism. They know this is real. They know that 
It appears to be randomness. Uncertainty appears to be reality. But underlying information is consciousness. So I've linked down a fifth and final video down below in the description box where we're talking to Lothar Schaefer again. And I think I've linked this video for you guys once before where he describes consciousness as an unexplainable cosmic force. So it's not that uncertainty is reality. It appears that way. It appears that way to scientists when they're taking their measurements, doing their experiments, making their observations. It looks random. But underlying the randomness is an intelligence. Now, why does the intelligence pick one thing or the other when it does? Why this particle here instead of putting it there? Well, it's intelligence, guys. It's consciousness. It's spirit. It has absolute free will. What did you have for dinner yesterday? Well, whatever you had, let's say you had tacos. Okay, what did you have dinner the night before? Maybe you had pizza, right? Well, why not a sandwich? I don't know, because you felt like it. It's random. It's free will. There's an intelligence underlying the universe, guys. And the intelligence is what picks what appears to be random to science. Because again, science is looking at it from the outside. All they see are zeros and ones, particles on a screen, or atoms where you can predict where the atom is going to go, but you can't predict where it is right now. Or you can say where it is right now, but you can't say where it's going to go. You can pick one, but you can't pick the other simultaneously. That's the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, right? There's uncertainty. And scientists are finally starting to accept that uncertainty is part of our reality. But it's not uncertainty. It's life. Guys, the universe is alive. You are literally living inside a gigantic creature called God. And you are also made of the stuff of it. Do you remember in the Bible where it said, God created man in his own image and likeness? Right. You're a creator. You are life. Hmm. Very interesting. So the information that scientists are looking at, they're looking at pure information. It's mind. Where did that come from? Consciousness consciousness, which is non-duality. Information came from non-duality. The information is duality. So you start with non-duality, consciousness. From there, you move into the duality of mind and information. And the information amalgamates into 3D physical reality. How about that? And that shouldn't come as any surprise to any of you. We already know that's how that works in spiritual circles. But guys, what I'm telling you is science is proving that out right now. And again, you can look at ancient hermetic philosophy, which already outlined all this stuff millennia ago. And science, they're just verifying all of that right now. And they're not talking about it in the mainstream, but I will. And by the way, guys, if you're new to the members only community, I invite you to go back and get caught up on the old existing members only videos. Just click the members tab menu above and get caught up. You paid for it. Watch them, guys. I'll see you next time.